guys, Marvin here from TechBureau.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy bureaus. And today we're going to do an unboxing review of what I think is the next bang for the buck gaming monitor out in the market right now with 144Hz refresh rate, 1 millisecond response time, IPS display, and VESA mounting support for only... Listen to this guys. With this kind of specs like IPS panel 144Hz display for only 10,000 pesos or 200 US dollars, it's just insane. But is it really good? Let's find out, shall we? With that being said, let's get into it. Alright, so one way to cut corners, I guess, is to have a quite generic brown box like this. But at least we have all the details that we need, like we have here the model name and all the key features here in front. At the side of the box, we have the specific model name, which is the ASUS VP249QGR. So, let's see what comes in the package. Alright, so inside the box, we have the circular base protected with the plastic, which is nice. And then we have the user manual and an HDMI cable. Unfortunately, there's no display port cable included, which I guess is another way to cut the cost. But don't worry as you will still be able to run this at 144Hz via HDMI of course. The monitor is actually sandwiched between these two massive styrofoams, so you'll have to pull it out sideways to make it easier. Once out, we have the power cable so it looks like the power supply is built in on the monitor itself. We also have here the usual ASUS VIP member notice and the ASUS VP249QGR monitor itself, nicely protected by a large foam sleeve. Alright, so mounting the circular base to the monitor is super easy with just one screw that you can actually tighten using your hand. But of course, just to make sure, tighten it further using a Phillips head screw or probably with a small coin. And there you go. Here's the ASUS VP249QGR in all its inexpensive glory. You also get free stickers. How about that? <laughs> now, this is not exactly new for monitors on this price range but the tilting options are quite limited. You only have slight tilting forward and backward and that's about it. As for the dimensions with my own measurements, it is 54 cm by 32.4 cm by 4.5 cm. The last one is just a rough estimate as it's kinda hard to measure that part. Now the exact diagonal measurement of this monitor is actually 23.8 inches and it has a non-glare finish. The bezels are quite thin as you can see, but later I will show you guys exactly how thin it is when the display is actually turned on. The base is made of plastic, at least the one that's visible to us, and we also have a chrome ASUS logo at the center. On the lower right corner, we have some red prints as a guide for the OSD controls and it actually gives this kind of illusion that looks like it is illuminated but it's not. But what's illuminated here is the LED for power. On the other side, we have the DisplayPort logo and that's pretty much what we have in front. Now looking underneath the monitor, we have ventilation here at the bottom and another ventilation here beside the power port. Speaking of ports, we also have an HDMI, DisplayPort, D-Sub and a 3.5mm port. Checking out the back, we also have some ventilations here that go all the way across the entire monitor and we also have a large cutout here for easy access to the ports while maintaining a relatively thin form factor. We also have here at the back a glossy ASUS logo and below that we have the 100mm VESA mount screw holes covered with a rubber cap. Now the back of the circular base is glossy but it doesn't matter as it is only seen at the back. And lastly, before I forgot, we have a Kensington lock hole right here because having your monitor stolen is a pain in the butt, right? Now, what I like about this monitor, especially given its price, is that it is, like I said, VESA mount compatible. However, the package doesn't seem to include screws, so you'll have to make sure you have them, especially if you're buying a monitor arm from the second-hand market. Alright, so before you proceed, let me pop the complete specifications on the screen so that you can check it out. Now, let's check out the OSD of the ASUS VP249QGR. What I appreciate here is that even on their budget monitors like this, the OSD menu is pretty much the same, just different buttons. So we have the blue light filter up to 4 levels, then we have splendid which essentially are just presets that you can take advantage depending on your preference. I usually don't use this because I like to calibrate my monitor using an external tool. Next we have the game plus which includes tools like timer, FPS counter, and display alignment should you choose to use multiple monitors. Next we have the input selection option, a dedicated button for closing the menu, and the main menu itself. So we have here the splendid presets, blue light filter, color where you can adjust brightness, contrast, and color temperature. We also have here the image wherein you have some valuable settings like trace free, free sync, ELMB, shadow boost, and others. Next we have sound because this monitor actually has two 2 watt stereo speakers. Again we have the input selection and the rest of the system settings of the monitor. And lastly, you can also set up a couple of shortcuts here. So yeah, like I said, the OHD settings are pretty standard across different monitors from ASUS. Now moving on, let's check out the quality of the display of the new budget gaming monitor from ASUS. Let's start off with a question that I'll probably get often from you guys. 
will G-Sync work on this monitor? Well, as per specifications, it supports both Adaptive Sync for NVIDIA Graphics Card 10 Series and above, and of course, AMD's Free Sync. As per my testing using a DisplayPort cable, you can definitely enable G-Sync on this monitor as you can see here. But take note that it is not officially validated as G-Sync compatible at least at the time of this review. Unfortunately, there's no DisplayPort cable included on the package, so you'll have to purchase one separately if you want to get a chance on enabling G-Sync on this monitor. But yeah, the answer is yes, you can enable G-Sync with this budget monitor. Now, when it comes to refresh rate, I always get questions from you guys on how to properly set it up, especially for high refresh rate monitors like this, and it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is open up the NVIDIA control panel, and usually the native refresh rate is around 60Hz, and to enable higher refresh rate, you have to scroll down to the PC options. And then you should see the higher refresh rate option including the maximum 144Hz. Click apply, and you're good to go. Now, another method is by going to display settings, advanced display settings, monitor, and then you should see all the available refresh rates that your monitor can support. Click apply and you should also see that now in the NVIDIA control panel. I know this part of the review is probably unnecessary for most of you guys, but you'll be surprised at how many people actually ask about this. So yeah. Speaking of refresh rates, let's dig in further on the refresh rates and response times of the ASUS VP249QGR. The higher the refresh rate of a monitor, the less motion blur you're going to get and will result in a better overall image quality alongside things like IPS panel, quick response time, adaptive sync, etc. And as you can see in this example, jumping from 60Hz to 144Hz refresh rate, the difference is quite significant, night and day. Now, capturing refresh rate, ghosting, and things like artifacts and showing it to you guys is kinda tricky, especially that you're watching this video at 30fps. So what I did is I set my camera's frame rate to the maximum it can support, which is 120fps, and then also set the monitor's refresh rate to 120Hz to hopefully match the frames. So this part is very important guys. For the response time, the ASUS VP249QGR has a 1 millisecond MPRT or Moving Picture Response Time also known as Display Persistence. Take note though that this is different to GTG or Gray to Gray which this monitor is rated at 4 milliseconds. GTG is the amount of time a pixel takes to change from one color to another. The faster it is, the less ghosting you will encounter. As for MPRT, this is the amount of time a pixel remains to be visible. So the shorter the time, the less ghosting you will encounter, much like GTG. And to be able to reach that 1ms MPRT rating, a monitor needs some sort of blur reduction feature or backlight strobing which ASUS has with ELMB or Extreme Low Motion Blur. The problem is that you cannot enable adaptive sync alongside ELMB unless you have the ASUS Tough VG27AQ which can do both at the same time. Also with ELMB, the brightness is relatively dimmer because the backlight is strobing and not constant. Another thing about MPRT is that it is relative to the active refresh rate. The higher the refresh rate, the faster the motion picture response time. Another thing that's important to note that affects ghosting is Trace Free, also known as Overdrive, which the ASUS VP249QGR is set to 60 out of the box, which is known to be the sweet spot for reducing ghosting while minimizing corona artifact. To be honest, basing on our test results here, I cannot distinguish the significant difference and even at Trace Free 100, I don't see any corona artifacts. As for the overclocking performance of the ASUS VP249QGR, it is pretty decent and as per my testing, there's no frame skipping even at 120Hz and overclocked 144Hz. And lastly, this monitor also has the shadow boost feature, which essentially boosts the shadow while maintaining details on the highlights, which can be useful for gaming. So yeah, I hope this is not too confusing for you guys, I try to balance it out and make it as simple as possible while providing details for those who care. So just to sum it up, you need to enable ELMB to achieve that 1ms MPRT or else you will settle with the 4ms GTG which is still pretty decent. And to be fair with ASUS, if you just read their product page, they specifically mention that part as you can see here. It's just that sometimes when people see, oh 1ms, great, awesome, but there's actually more to it than just the number. So at the end of the day, you'll have to choose between less ghosting with ELMB or no screen tearing with adaptive sync. And with all that being said, considering the price of this monitor and given that it can achieve 144Hz with an IPS panel, that alone even with 4 millisecond GTG in normal mode is pretty decent for casual gaming. And if you think about it, if you're really serious about competitive gaming, then I'm pretty sure you're considering something higher than this price point. Alright guys, moving on in terms of display quality, with an IPS panel of course, the colors are vivid, contrast and sharpness is very good and viewing angles are also great as you can see here. Colors remain the same with just a slight reduction on brightness, especially on unrealistically extreme angle like this. And since this is not OLED, blocks are not entirely black, but since the contrast levels are decent, we still get a good pop of details on dark images. 
We'll talk about color accuracy later, but as for backlight bleeding, it is minimal as you can see here, in all angles, and in my opinion, this is pretty normal. As for dark spots on white background, thanks to its IPS panel, it is also quite minimal here on all angles as well. Large texts are also readable on any normal angle, and small texts are also pretty crisp and without color shifting when scrolling. So yeah, by simply looking at the display on different angles, I'd say the quality is on par with other ASUS monitors that I've tried. Now finally, when it comes to color accuracy with an IPS panel, we should be expecting pretty decent results here. And true enough, the ASUS VP249QGR has a 99% sRGB coverage, 73% NTSC, 79% Adobe RGB, and 78% PT color gamut. Now, out of the box, the color calibration of the ASUS VP249QGR is pretty good as you can see here on our before and after results. And with that, of course, productivity such as photo and video editing is good with this monitor, at least for casual applications like web photos and social media postings. And of course, media consumption is very good with this monitor as well with rich colors and like I said, pretty decent viewing angles. So basically, you and your friends can watch movies at the same time without having to look at the monitor head on. It also has built-in stereo speakers, though I would personally prefer to use dedicated speakers for better sound quality, but it's there if ever you need it. And lastly, before we end this review, let's discuss the gaming performance of the ASUS VP249QGR because this is a gaming monitor to begin with. The ASUS VP249QGR with 1 millisecond MPRT, 4 millisecond GTG, and 144Hz refresh rate, the gaming experience is pretty decent. Like I said, if you want less ghosting, then you should consider using ELMB to get that 1 millisecond response time. On the other hand, since this is not a TN panel which can go as low as 0.5 millisecond GTG, even with the 4 millisecond GTG with this IPS panel, it is pretty decent for casual gaming with minimal ghosting. Alright, so to conclude, at the price of only 10,000 pesos or 200 US dollars, I am really hard pressed guys to look for where ASUS actually cut corners with this, except for not including a DisplayPort cable and a subpar packaging design. And even though it only has 4 millisecond GTG response time for a gaming monitor, it's also worth noting that most budget gaming monitors at this price point have a response time similar to this or actually even worse at 5 milliseconds. The display's quality is very good with 99% sRGB color accuracy, decent viewing angles, rich and vibrant colors, substantial contrast and sharpness, and overall good image quality for what it's worth. And at this point, I can definitely consider this as the new bang for the buck gaming monitor. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Make sure to check the full article linked below. Huge thanks to ASUS for sending this in and for their continued support on this channel and for allowing me to provide unrestricted reviews for their products. You can get this gaming monitor from their official store on Lazada, link below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and let's get that 13k subscribers in. Thank you, have a great day.